Hello and welcome to the evening news for today, Saturday, August 30, 2014. I'm Avinash Ramzan. Thanks for joining us. In the headlines, Lexus vehicles seized as GRA deepens probe in remigrant scheme scam. AG's advice being sought after Glenn Lal threatens Kershit Sattar. Burby's businessman robbed, wife and daughters raped. Body of Barama worker recovered and quarantine residents complain of crime and piracy. Now for the news in detail. As the probe into the recently unearthed remigrant scam by the Guyana Revenue Authority, the GRA, deepens, the GRA boss, Kershit Sattar, received grave threats from one of the persons at the center of the scam. Let's find out more in this report. Commissioner General of the Guyana Revenue Authority, Kershit Sattar, says that he is now seeking legal advice from the Attorney General after he received threats from Kaitor News' publisher, Glenn Lal. Sattar said that he received a call from Lal last evening, who proceeded to vociferously threaten him. Lal allegedly told Sattar that he would use his newspaper, the Kaitor News, to destroy him. Mr. Glenn Lal, I recognize his voice. Call me from an overseas number and threaten to expose me, threaten to deal with me uh, in a manner that um, suggests that I'm a thief, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and to just say that he, he uh, is going to do it simply because I am using my office to deal with the work that I normally deal with in the proper manner that I normally deal with these matters. Mm -hmm. It seems like Mr. Glenn doesn't is not subject to the laws of this country. He's like the president. He's not subject to the laws of this country. It's a serious matter when we have people like them you know, um, in society who feel that they are immune from doing the right thing, from subject to the law. Lal is at the center of a current investigation being carried out by the Ghana Revenue Authority. The body is investigating a case where the government of Guyana was cheated out of approximately $40 million in taxes. It involves two Lexus 570 vehicles, which are primarily driven by Lal and his wife, Bina, of Bina's Footwear. Fourth Evening News, Michael Young reporting. Meanwhile, the Ghana Revenue Authority today conducted an operation which saw both Lexus vehicles being seized as it deepens its probe into the investigations. The GRA staff were met with stern resistance and there was a standoff as attempts were made to gain possession of the vehicles. You'll have a full report on this matter in Monday's edition of the Evening News. Acting Chief Justice Ian Chang late yesterday afternoon ruled that the mayor and city councillors lacked the authority to send acting town clerk Carol Suba on administrative leave. After hearing the news, Mayor Green yesterday appeared blue. Details in this report. Acting Chief Justice Ian Chang today nullified a recent decision by the mayor and the city council to send acting town clerk Carl Suba on administrative leave. The chief justice in the ruling said that the city council lacked the authority to send Suba, who is an officer of the council, on leave. City Mayor Hamilton Green and some city councillors recently voted in favor of a no confidence motion against Suba. Despite the motion, Suba stood her ground at City Council and during barricaded doors and other forms of embarrassment. Uh, we are quite satisfied by the ruling of the Honorable Chief Justice today. The Honorable Chief Justice ruled that the City Council has no power to take any administrative steps to have Ms. Suba sent on administrative leave. All the decisions that they will have taken in that regard, the court ruled today that it is ultra-virus, which means that it is beyond their power. So Ms. Suba remains the town clerk. Shortly after the ruling, the Evening News spoke to Suba, who had this to say. The ruling was as expected, and um, I'll make a copy. It's in favor of the town clerk of Georgetown, and I'm happy about it. My competent lawyer was able to represent me properly. So, do you feel vindicated give... with the ruling by the I ruling? do. City Mayor Hamilton Green said he was not aware that an application of the sort was filed by Suba, hence the ruling is a surprise to him. Rather unusual and inconsistent with the natural rules of justice. Uh, as you just heard, any matter of that nature requires both sides to be able to present a case to the judge or whichever agency is to make a judgment. Um, we are unaware of any such ruling, and if it is true, it is another dent on our judicial system. 
The recent decision by the court is said to be a slap in the face of the Hamilton Green Council, which has created tension and frustration within the Georgetown municipality by waging war against Suba's appointment. It also represents another accomplishment under the acting town clerk's belt, who has exposed the widespread corruption that exists at the council. And in some sad news now, the wife and three daughters of a quarantine businessman were allegedly raped and robbed during a robbery committed on their business place on Tuesday last. The act was committed by four armed men who invaded a property just after 21 hours on the night in question. The victims are 35, 18, 15 and 14. According to information received, the 33-year-old businessman operates a small grocery business in the area and was about to close for the night when the four men entered the yard from a side fence. Upon entering the business place, three of the four men, who are armed with handguns and the author with a cutlass, reportedly tied the businessman's hands behind his back and left them in the shop. The men then went into the house, took out the four ladies and sexually assaulted them. The men reportedly took turns in committing the act. As they were done, the men stripped the ladies of their jewelry and demanded cash. Already in fear, the businessman's wife handed over $50,000 to the bandits. They also relieved the family of three mobile phones. During the more than one hour ordeal, the businessman managed to untie himself and alerted the police. As they were about to leave the home, the police arrived, resulting in an exchange on, of gunfire, but the men successfully escaped. The Zakat House of Kuwait and the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana, the CIOG, hosted their second annual Orphans and Vulnerable Children Fund Day on the lawns of the Muslim Youth Organization. Let's take a look. The celebration was held for the students that would have excelled at the National Grade 6 Assessment, NGSA, and also the Caribbean Examination Council, CXC, this year. Head of the Zakat House of Kuwait, Sheikh Munel Haq, told his newscast that all the students who would have sat the examinations came out successfully. He also made mention of Mr. Ramsaran, who was a former student of the organization and is now an under-19 player for Guyana at the Albion Club. Among the major success of this program, we have had a number of students, uh, orphan and vulnerable children, who rode the CSEC in the past years and are now attending the University of Guyana. Some of them have graduated from the University of Guyana, uh, not only in, in that field, but also in the technical vocational. We, the, the Ministry of Education, Youth Sports and Culture, have, uh, we have collaborated with them for children who have an interest in tech voc programs and they have attended the technical institutes here in Georgetown GITC as well as the Guy Subu Training Center in uh, Barbies. Uh, among the recent success would have been this year uh, all eight students gained more than eight orphans who gained more than five subjects at the CSEC exams in grades one, two and three and Mr. Uh, Ramsaran, who is now an under-19 player for Guyana of Albion, is uh, a former student of this orphan program here also. So we think that we have done well and we are thankful to government and all the different ministries, education, youth sports, culture, health uh, and others and the Ministry of Human Services. They have donated uh, the uniforms for our children who are attending our schools as well as the state of Kuwait and all our local sponsors, uh, business uh, corporate uh, entities, who, like Gafson's company, Queens Atlantic, Twins Manufacturing, and they have allowed a number of our children to do their work study at their uh, respective um, entities, uh, in addition to government also. And this has been very helpful to the student of, of this program. Guyana's First Lady, Deolach Miramutar, also extended congratulations to the students. And I'm here at the Fund Day, hosted by the CIOG. It's my second year of coming here, and I must commend the CIOG for the sponsoring of this um, Fund Day. And they are the sponsor of the, the uh, Orphan and Vulnerable Chil Children Program, we see that all children are placed, orphans and vulnerable children are placed in homes um, and not institutions. They are placed in homes and so that they will be um, involved in a family life. They also fund, um, they give a stipend, the uniform, they 
all, the, all the, that is necessary for them to have a normal life. Amongst the graduates were Farina Mohammed, Madrimutu, Aisha Parks, and Razim Ayushanali. Ms. Parks spoke with this newscast about her challenges while preparing for the examinations. It was a little difficult at night, being staying up late, revising certain TV games. You can't play games, you can't watch TV, you can't do certain things because you have to revise and so on. Well, at the end of it, I come out successful. And I've been coming here for the past four years, and I think it's a very good experience. After the ceremony ended, the fun began on the lawns of the Muslim Youth Organization. Cartoon characters Barney, Diego, and Dora were present to interact with the younger kids. I'm Sidi Ramnot reporting for the Evening News. If you have a news tip or news story you'd like our team to follow, message or WhatsApp us on telephone numbers 680-9630 or 600-3117. You can also call the office on telephone numbers 231-0382, or 223-7231. One news ahead. Stay tuned. This is the Evening News. This is the Evening News. Welcome back. The body of 18-year-old Sean Denzel Atkinson of Timeri East Bank Demerara, who went missing on Friday afternoon after plunging into a canal at Land of Canaan on the East Bank of Demerara, was fished out sometime after 17 hours 45. After hours under the black water, the young man who has been employed with the Barama Company Limited for the past two years as a sawmill laborer was pulled by relatives and colleagues. His body, according to reports, was taken to the Diamond Diagnostic Center, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Melinda Sutherland, mother of the teen, was still devastated about her son's death, but stated that she, lost, she last saw her son when he left home on Friday morning. She said that he had indicated that he was chosen to play on a cricket team during the fun day, and he was all excited. She recalled being at home when she received a call from a supervisor, informing her of the devastating news. The grieving mother said that she immediately rushed to the scene, where she saw several persons searching the area. The Human Services and Social Security Ministry, in collaboration with the Ghana Police Force, yesterday commenced a two-day training program for police officers on the Sexual Offences Act of 2010 with the aim of making greater prosecution. More from Svetlana Marshall. The Sexual Offences Training Program got off to quite an ironic start this morning at the Felix Austin Police College as only a handful of the participants turn up to the session one hour after it was slated to begin. This did not stop Human Services Minister Jennifer Webster from explaining to those present that the program is designed to edify frontline officers on the Sexual Offences Act with the aim of paving the way for effective implementation. We have developed a protocol for ranks of the Guyana Police Force, which is a standard operating procedure, which will guide them in dealing with reports um, when reports come to the respective stations and how they deal with the reports and what is required of the ranks in terms of the, the investigating process so that we would have um, cases going before the courts um, not being uh, thrown out. The Human Services Minister further explained that emphasis is being placed on sections of the Act that allude directly to children. While the government is playing its role, Minister Webster said it is time citizens speak out more against sexual, domestic and interpersonal violence. If you are aware of something that is going on um, within your community, you need to report it. In the case of children and, and child abuse cases, the Child Protection Agency has a hotline. Call the, the hotline number and give the report. We're not interested in your name. What we are interested in is having the complaint and uh, having the report received in a timely way so that it could, it could be properly investigated. And once we get all the details of which community it is, the location, the address, and so on, I can assure you that we will promptly address those issues. Part of it is that people in communities have knowledge and only when something seriously happens, then you hear, oh, 
well, you know, the father was interfering with this child all the time, or he was beating his wife all the time. So we need to be our brother and sister's keeper and not to see these issues in isolation as, as something that is not a matter of our own personal concern. But we should pay attention because today it might be me and tomorrow it might be you. Meanwhile, Director of the Child Care and Protection Agency, Anne Green, said the Ghana Police Force has improved with regards to the handling of sexual offenses cases involving children. However, she explained that the two-day program will address the weak areas. Svetlana Marshall reporting for the Evening News. Residents and members of the business community of Central and Upper Quarantine have complained that crime and piracy are among several issues that are affecting them. They aired their concern during a meeting with Acting Police Commissioner Silal Posad, B Division Acting Commander Marlon Chapman and a team of high-ranking police officials. The thrust of the meeting was to get to know the concerns affecting community members and how the police and community can work hand-in-hand -hand for a better society. Residents felt that enough is not being done to curtail the increasing levels of crime in the region. They are of the view that the criminals are always one step ahead of the police in many cases. In instances where those guilty are caught, the residents felt that the police are sloppy in their presentation, allowing them to walk away scotch-free while the victims cope with their losses. The 11 contestants vying for the Mr. Guyana International title were officially presented to the public last evening at a Pegasus Hotel. Bishar Muhammad was there and filed this report. The contenders were present at the launch were Stowell Bentham, Paul Charles, Kurt Walcott, Kevin Bagrat, Colwyn Abrams, Trevon Fenty, Kristen Pollard, Kevin Smith, Raphael October and Ryan Washington. Alexander Fitkow, the other contestant, was absent due to unforeseen circumstances. Decked in purple shirts and black tailored pants, the contestants showed off their masculinity as they presented themselves to the media and special invitees. The concept of the pageant derived after it was realized over the years, there has been a decline in the morale of men in society due to their involvement in sexual assaults, armed robberies and domestic violence, among other social ills. In 2000, the coordinator Paul Burnett had planned a competition called Mr. Guyana Ambassador, a competition that would have involved the macho men to be mentors in society. Again in 2012, he held an audition for the Mr. Guyana pageant and was successful in getting six contestants, but due to the ill minds of society, the competition was squashed. Two years later, he was happy to announce the launch of the inaugural Mr. Guyana International that will be hosted under the theme, True Sons of the Soil. Five of these 11 contestants will be representing Guyana at their individual international male competition. If you notice, I'm not saying pageants, because pageants is a whole new different concept altogether. This is a competition. Right, Kurt? Okay. Campbell? Mr. Caribbean, <laughs> Mr. Global, International, Mr. International, Mr. World, once all goes as planned, Mr. Caribbean International, and Mr. Caribbean, at each competition showcasing Guyanese men as positive and influential in every way. Try their utmost to receive, remove that stain that we are thieves, murderers, rapists, and ignorant people. Meanwhile, the local competition will have several segments to test the contestants' strengths. Community Spirit Building Fun Day, which is October 19th. Swimwear and Fashion Challenge, what to wear and what not to wear with, at what events and so on. October 24th at Duke Lodge, Talent and Question and Answer. And that will be an in-house uh, competition. And the final competition and coronation on November 2nd, right here in the Savannah Suite of the Meridian Pegasus. Barnett is calling on the media to sell the event for what it is and not what people perceive it to be. Quote, another male pageant with gay men. End of quote. Bisham Mohammed, The Evening News. The National Health and Family Planning Commission of the People's Republic of China, in continuance of their friendly relations and generosity, will be making a donation of medical equipment to the Georgetown Public Hospital Cooperation, the GPHC. According to a release, the equipment, valued $15 million, will be used in the departments of anesthesia, obstetrics and gynecology, ophthalmology, pathology, general surgery, orthopedics, internal medicine, acupuncture and radiology, and will greatly improve the medical services offered to patients. The, do the donation will be held on Tuesday at a resource center, the GPHC Southern Compound, and will commence at 15 hours. Ten doctors of the Chinese medical team of June 2014 will be present at this event, and among the speakers will be Health Minister Dr. Barry Ramsaran 
and Chinese Ambassador Zhang Liman. In case of just you're watching Evening News. We now turn to some news from the region. Brazil fell into a recession in the first half of the year as investment dropped sharply and the country's hosting of the World Cup suffocated economic activity, a major blow to President Dilma Rousseff's already fading hopes for a re-election in October. Latin America's largest economy has suffered stagnant growth for more than three years under the economic policies of the left-leaning Rousseff, which have been dented consumers and business confidence and caused heavy losses for financial investors. The economy took an even bigger downturn in the second quarter, with gross domestic product contracting 0.6% from the first quarter, government statistics agency, the IBGE, said on Friday. It also, reviewed lower, it also revised lower its estimates for the first quarter activity to 0.2% contraction, meaning that the economy entered a recession. Internationally, Ukraine's president has said his country is close to a point of no return, full-scale war. Petro Poroshenko was speaking in Brussels, where he said a meeting of EU leaders had agreed to prepare more sanctions against Russia. The outgoing EU foreign policy chief, Catherine Ashton, earlier accused Russia of direct aggression in East Ukraine. Russia denies that its forces are backing rebels who have been getting grounds on Ukrainian forces. Poroshenko said Ukraine was a victim of military aggression and terror. He said, and I quote, I think that we are very close to the point of no return. Point of no return is full-scale war, end quote. You watch an evening news, now take a look at your bridge reports. The Damrar Harbour Bridge is expected to be closed from 5 hours 30 on Sunday, August 31, 2014, for a period of one and a half hours. And the Burbage River Bridge is expected to be closed from 6 hours 40 on Sunday, August 31, 2014, for a period of one and a half hours. Join us after the break for sports, sponsored by Marco. This is the evening news. Welcome back now for a look at sport, but first the headlines. Speaker throws support behind Cricket for Unity game. Williams wins NSC feature race as Tijam Young cycling ends and Chanda Paul alone Guyanese in the West Indies test squad. Of course, this podcast comes with the kind compliments of MacWarp. We believe that everything worth building should be built just once. And that is why we build on culture, on trust. On integrity. We exist to do more, better, faster, safer. Your success depends on the foundation it's built on. Everything we do is meant to move you forward. Marco, let's build Guyana together. Welcome back. We start off with some cricket news. Speaker of the National Assembly, Raffel Trotman, on Friday confirmed his support for the inaugural Cricket for Unity 2020 cricket match on September 6 at the Demerara Cricket Club ground in Queenstown. Details in this report. Trotman handed over a quantity of medals to coordinator of the match, Dexter Garnett, at public buildings. Garnett, in turn, presented Trotman with his jersey for the game as the speaker is due to turn out for Roraima Strikers against Kaichur Thunders. Trotman said he is pleased to assist the organizers and said the initiative is a good one. He lauded Garnet and his team for choosing unity as the theme of the match. This morning I am handing over these medals to Mr. Dexter Garnet because I'm in full support of his initiative to have a day of sports, a particular cricket match that promotes unity amongst the leaders of Guyana. And I believe that every guy wants to see the leaders, particularly their political leaders, working together, playing together and dealing with the problems of Ghana together. I know that we have uh, tension in the air and many issues facing us, but I'm happy that someone has thought of an idea, or not thought of an idea, but done something with an idea to not just talk the talk, but walk the talk. Garnet, in receiving the medals, expressed gratitude to Trotman for a kind gesture. I want to thank you and ask the old corporate Ghana to, to come and go and make, make a presentation towards the Cricket for Unity. And so I'll be looking forward to a huge turnout come September 6 to see two teams, you know, being comprised of real prominent people set to strike it off. And um, I will make a presentation to the speaker 
Also die offenen Watzmann für die. <laughs> Meanwhile, Public Relations Officer Frankie Wilson said preparations for the game are coming along well. What we are going to be doing as well, we're looking at the possibility, and strongly so, of having a female game before the main game between the Kaichor Thunders and Roraima Strikers. Uh, later today, or over the weekend, we will confirm that game where some of the Leading female players, Guyanese, who are also part of the West Indies setup, will be on show as well because we want the public to get, you know, a, a, a fun time on Saturday, the 6th of September. Apart from a host of former cricketers, the match will feature politicians, singers, journalists, businessmen, police officers, and lawyers. Action will bowl off at 19 hours, and admission to the venue is $500. Second news, Marlon Fishy Williams defeated Hamza Eastman in a close sprint finish to win the feature event when the National Sports Commission closed off the annual Teach Them Young cycling program earlier today at the National Park. Details in this report. Williams outsprinted Eastman in a close finish, winning by a matter of inches when race official Joseph Britton stopped the clock at 1 hour, 16 minutes, 4.46 seconds. Alonzo Graves, Michael Anthony, Robin Possod and Mark Harris rounded off the top six finishers in that order. Other winners of the day included Rakeem Blair, Jaikaran Sukhai, Lyndon Blackman, Monty Paris, Jamal John, Emmanuel Gerald, Jeremiah Harrison, Sherwin Sampson and Sherwin Ford. National coach and coordinator of the Teach Them Young program, Hassan Mohammed, commended the National Sports Commission for sponsoring the camp for the 30th year in succession. Director of Sport, Neil Kumar, emphasized the importance of hosting such a camp, noting that it has consistently brought forth new talents annually. I want to say that very frankly, that this program is a highly successful program. This program is the nursery for cycling in this country. And this program is the reservoir for cycling in this country because I could say that almost all the cyclists that are riding today, the national cyclists that are competing at different level, they came through this program. And this, I want to say thanks very much to Hassan Mohammed and his team, people like Sokraj, Britain, them, and all the others who have been with him all the time to make sure that this program come off. To the sponsors, I say that Rick Sari, uh, that Regan started this program, giving a cycle to the, the most promising young cyclists who need a cycle because, you know, everybody, parents cannot afford to buy them a cycle, a cycle. But we will encourage you as far as possible and we will try to get uh, to encourage you to ride. In what has become a norm over the years, Rickson Sari Agro Industries put up a brand new BMX cycle for the most promising rider of the program. This year, the recipient was the talented Sherwin Sampson, who has been dominating the BMX 6-9 and 9-12 for close to two years. Back to some cricket news. Shiv Narayan Chandapal is the lone Guyanese in a 13-man West Indies squad for the two test matches against Bangladesh starting next week. Chandapal is the second highest test run scorer for the West Indies, only behind Brian Lara, and is a key member of the team set to face the tourists who have not enjoyed the best of times in international cricket this year. The squad was the first one picked by the new WICB selection panel led by the legendary Clive Lloyd. The only change from the previous squad was the reserve batsman Leon Johnson being dropped. The West Indies squad is Dinesh Ramdin captain, Christopher Gale, Craig Braffitt, Kirk Edwards, Darren Bravo, Shivnarain Chandapal, German Blackwood, Kimar Roach, Jerome Taylor, Jason Holder, Shannon Gabriel, Suleiman Ben and Shane Schillingford. And finally, England suffered another demoralizing defeat as India moved 2-0 ahead with two games left in the one-day series courtesy of a six-wicket triumph. Batting first, England's Alistair Cook, 44, and Alex Hales, 42, reached 82 without loss after 18 overs before they lost three wickets for 15 runs in 28 balls. It needed 42 from Josh Butler and 30 and 18 balls from James Treadwell to take England to a modest 227 with the off-spinner Rajendra Ravichandran Ashwin claiming three for 39. Ambati Raidu then struck an unbeaten 64 as India won with seven overs to spare. And with that, we've come to the end of sport, which is sponsored by Mark Warp. And that's a wrap as well on the evening news for today, Saturday, August 30, 2014. Of course, you can find these and many more stories in tomorrow's edition of the Guyana Times. And here's an invitation to join us on TVG Channel 28 and on Radio Guyana Inc. 89.3 Nesikubo, 89.5 in Georgetown Environs and 89.7 in Burbies and Unicary, Suriname. On behalf of all of us here, I'm Avinash Ramzan. Thanks for watching. Thank you.